Okay. Now, if you look at your list, if you notice that sine of x is equal to x minus x to the third over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial plus x to the ninth over 9 factorial, so forth and so on and so on. Now, the one reason I like this list is because it points out that sine is an odd function and has all odd exponents. So it's kind of one of those things to help you remember it. Is that the reason why sine is an odd function? Or is there something else? Oh, no, it's odd just because from trig and graphing and everything else. It's just symmetric across the origin. It just so happens that the exponents are all odd on the McLaurin series. Okay. And if we did the same thing with cosine, cosine of x would equal 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial plus x to the 8th over 8 factorial and so forth and so on and so on. So since cosine is even, and with this one, you're kind of starting at x equals 0, even though 0 isn't technically an even number. You're just going from 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, so forth and so on. Okay. And we can see that e to the x is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the third over three factorial, plus x to the fourth over four factorial, fifth over five factorial, and it keeps on going to some x to the n over n factorial. Okay. So what if we replace x with i times x? And remember, i is equal to the square root of negative 1. Okay, so that means we have e to the ix. Better yet, make it negative ix, since they both work the same way. So negative ix. Okay, so e to the negative ix is just going to be 1 plus negative ix plus negative ix squared over 2 factorial plus negative ix to the third over 3 factorial plus negative ix to the fourth over 4 factorial and it keeps on going to some negative ix to the n factorial. Oh, to the nth over n factorial. Okay, so if we simplified it, we'd have 1 minus i times x. This becomes negative i squared, so that's just negative, well, that becomes positive, but negative i, I mean, i squared becomes negative 1. So you have minus, trying to keep all those negatives together. Then you have minus, that becomes negative i times x to the third power. So you have negative i, yep, that would be minus i x to the third over 3 factorial. Plus, you have negative i squared, squared, which is just 1. So that just becomes plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial. Then you end up with minus x to the, minus i x to the fifth over 5 factorial. I know, trying to keep all that together. And then that's just minus x to the 6th. Yep, so that would just be minus 1x to the 6th over 6 factorial and so forth and so on and so on. Okay, so if you notice, 
all of these terms here with an I, we're going to separate them from the terms without an I. So you have e to the negative ix is going to equal 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial and so forth and so on and so on. If we factor out a negative i, that would just be x minus x to the 3rd over 3 factorial. Oh, that should be plus. Yep, so that, nope, actually that should be minus, wait a minute, let me make sure I must have messed up here. Negative i to the third, i squared is negative one. Yep, so that's negative i to the third over three factorial, so that is correct. Yep, so that is minus. Yep, so if I factor out a minus, Yep, it is negative. Okay. Hmm? Yep, so that one. Yep, so that becomes positive, so then you have negative one. Okay. So I, let me. Yep, so that's just times i. That's negative 1. Uh, yep, negative i. Okay, so that one should be... You factor that out. That should be negative. That should be negative. <laughs> I know, it, all these not... <laughs> I know, me and my side boxes. i to the fifth. That's i to the fourth times i. So that's just 1 times i, so that's just i. So this one should actually be... Yep, so that should be plus. Oh, okay. All right. So that's where I came in. Okay. Messed up on my signs. Okay, so that should be... Where'd I leave off? Factor out the i, factor out the i... Nope, actually we're factoring out the negative i. That's where I go. Okay. There we go. Yep, so that should be positive x. Positive x to the third over three. Nope, because that's neck. That's where, okay. <laughs> now I get it, because I, ne yep, I already took the negative out, so that should be, yep, so that should be positive. Nope. I hate when I catch mistakes late. I should have caught this last night when I made all this up. So that's fine. It's yep, so negative i, so I factor out negative i, so that should be plus, and x to the fifth, that should actually be i to the fifth is just i, so that should be plus. <laughs> so if I factor out a negative, that should be minus x to the fifth over five factorial. And I know I messed up somewhere because honestly this should be your cosine of x and this should be minus i times sine of x. So I'm trying to look and see where I made my mistake. I know the cosine of x worked out just fine so the i sine of x is the one where I'm drawing a little bit of a issue for some odd yeah, reason. So those signs are supposed to be like x minus plus minus. Exactly. So I'm I trying to figure it. out, so you have the negative i. Yep, that one's right. And the third. Okay, so negative i to the third. Okay, let me check. Just my, I know my little side boxes. Negative i to the third. So you might as well say negative 1 to the third, which is negative 1 times i to the third. So that should be positive. 
which means this is negative. Okay. <laughs> all right, so. All right, so, okay, I'm all set now. Which means this should be positive, and this should be negative, and it keeps on going. Okay. I hate dealing with eyes. There we go. Ten minutes of Thank you. Trying to figure out that one little mistake. All right. So here we have e to the negative i x equals cosine of x minus i sine of x, which is Euler's formula. Believe it or not, there's an entire course based on that one formula. I won't take that for Actually, it's not that bad. It's fun. What does he even, like, what does he even go over? Like, what concept is that? Oh, it goes over. It, you mainly deal with transference of heat. You use, like, the heat equation and the wave equation oh. and things like that. Okay. So this all kind of revolves around that one equation. So you have an entire book like that thick that revolves around that one equation. How much money did you make off that? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Probably nothing. Really? <laughs> Since he made it up like a thousand years ago. Um, so. All right. So after all of that, any questions? What does that mean? <laughs> well, with, with that, you'd have to mainly go through partial derivatives and everything else. So that's in Calc three. So once you get to partial derivatives. This will make a little more sense. What is a partial derivative? Instead of having a derivative with respect to <laughs> x, if you have an implicit function where you have x, y, and z okay. variables in there, basically it's three-dimensional. You can find the rate of change in the x direction, the y direction, and the z direction. Okay. So x, y, and z. Right. So. <laughs> And you'll find out it's not as bad as you think. It looks worse than it really is. <laughs> the other 25 letters of the alphabet through math. Oh, they go to alpha and beta and everything else. They... <laughs> All right, so for our next example, let's say we want to find the first four non zero. terms of the Maclaurin series for f of x, which is equal to cosine of 3x over 2, and write as a sum. Well, it's not really a sum, since you have minus signs thrown there and there also, so. All right, so just like before, you want to remember that cosine of x is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the nth power. Remember, it's an even function, so it's going to be x to the 2n over 2n factorial. Okay, so that means that cosine of 3x over 2 is just going to equal the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the nth power times 3x over 2 to the 2n power over 2n factorial. So you have 3x to the 2nth power over 2 to the 2nth power. So that's going to equal the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, of negative 1 to the nth power, over 3x to the 2nth power, over 2 to the 2nth power, times 2n factorial. 
So now we have our McLaurin series. We just plug in 0, 1, 2, and 3, and we'll have our first four terms. So plug in n equals 0. Negative 1 to the 0 power is 0. Everything is to the 0 power, so you just end up with 1. And remember, 0 factorial is 1. Minus, now you plug in n equals 1. Negative 1 to the first power is our minus 1 times 3x to the second power, which is 9x, or 9x squared, over 2 to the second power, which is 4 times 2 times, well, 2 factorial, so you have 8. Okay, so now our next term is going to be our n equals 2. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. So you have 3x to the 4th power. 3 to the 4th power is 9. 9 times 3 is 20. Hmm? 81. Yep, that would be 81. Oh, did we miss 1? No. 0, 1, 2. Just yep. So that would be 81. I don't know why it felt like I missed 1. I know, but that's probably it. You're skipping that 27. <laughs> okay, so you have 81 times x to the fourth power over 2 to the fourth power, 2 to the fourth, 16 times 4 factorial, 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 is 24. So really that should be... 16 times 24, I'll just leave it like that. You get the idea. Yep. Minus n equals 3. That gives you negative 1 to the third power, which is minus, times 3x to the sixth power. 3 to the sixth power is... <laughs> I know. <laughs> 3x oh, to the 6th power. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I'm not lying. It is 3x to the 6th power. You're right. <laughs> Over 2 to the 6th power, and I'll figure all this out in a second, <laughs> times 6 factorial. <laughs> we just got, like, less simplified. <laughs> I know it seemed nice and simple at first, but until you got to this part. Yeah. Okay, so 16 times 24, 384. Okay, so you have 1 minus 9x squared over 8 plus 81x to the fourth over 384 minus 3 to the sixth power. Seven twenty-nine. You didn't see me up here three times, three times, three like, times, three. Right. <laughs> <laughs> two, two to the sixth power. Two and two is four. Four, four. Sixteen. Sounds about right. <laughs> yep, sixty-four. I know times six factorial. I'll just put sixty-four times six factorial. Since I don't have my... Since I don't have my actual graphing calculator with me, I'll just... 24 times 30 720. Yep, so we'll leave it at that. But you kind of get the idea. So this would be the first four terms. But, of course, you'd have to simplify them. But other than that, these will be your first four terms. All right. So any questions on that one? I think the problem is I skipped and just wrote the simplified answer. So when this is actually simplified, this is what I have, 9x squared over 8 plus 27x to the fourth 
over 128 minus 81x to the sixth over 5,120. So this is after you simplify and cross cancel and all that other stuff. Yes? So are we pretty much supposed to summarize the uh, series for these counter? Unfortunately, yes. Okay. <laughs> Unless you want to work them out for each problem, which <laughs> would be a little bit of a <laughs> headache. So it would probably be easier just to memorize. Not that easier. That's probably the wrong word, but it would be, it would be, it would be, fa it would be faster to work them out, to actually <laughs> memorize them. No, it's pretty much only these functions that we have to know. Yep, that's it. Okay. All right. So any questions on this one? All right. So for our next example, find the first three, non-zero terms for f of x equals natural log of 1 minus x. So, we do know that natural log of 1 plus x is equal to the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 times x to the power of n over n. Okay, so our natural log of 1 minus x We can just make that the natural log of 1 plus negative x. So we just have to substitute our x with negative x. That's the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 times negative x to the nth power over n. So our negative x to the nth power, that's really just negative 1 to the nth power times x to the nth power. Over n. Okay. Which means we can just go ahead and combine these two negative 1s. So you have negative 1 to the nth plus 1 times negative 1 to the nth power, so it would be n plus 1 plus n, so it would be 2n plus 1. <coughs> so negative 1 to the 2n plus 1 times x to the n over n. Oh, clean that up a little bit. Okay. So if we plug, yes? Mm. Well, with natural log, you can't start at zero. So if you had n well, minus one. Mm. Oh, you mean for the negative one? Yeah. Oh yeah, you if it oh yeah, you could have switched that one up because you would have still gotten the same one. <coughs> I know that negative 1 to the nth power, that can be n, n plus 1, 2 n plus 1. Okay. It all depends. So you may see that a variety of different ways. Okay. So if we plug in n equals 1, you have negative 1 to the 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 1, 3. So that would be negative x plus, since we know it's 
Oh, actually, it's going to be odd again. So it's just minus, because this is always going to be odd, so this is always going to be negative 1. Okay. So remember, this is n equals 1. Our next term is n equals 2. So we have x squared over 2 minus, which is n equals 3, x to the third over 3. And they only said the first 3, but we'll put another one in there. And it keeps on going and going and going. All right. So any questions on that one? Yes. Well, with most of them, if you're, if, I'm, if I understood your question correctly, if you're looking for the nth term, it's different than the nth, ser nth term of the series. Okay. So it's not like if you're looking for the nth term, then you're just plugging in 1, 2, 3, 4 for x. But the series, you have to actually know what the series is in order to plug it in, if, I, if that explained it. Mm. One and two and three, and you, is it there a way is, to find but it's one through fifteen. At it is, but you'd have to find the summation, kind of like how we had the. I'm trying to remember it, but the sum of i squared is equal to n times n plus one over two. How that was kind of figured out, I want to say in calc one. You'd have to be able to figure that out to the 15th power, okay. which would be really lengthy. So then if you're looking for from, let's say, i equals 0 to some nth value. So if you're looking for the sum from 1 to 15 for i squared, then all you have to do is plug in 15, and that would give it to you. But with some really big number, it Kind of, yeah. You have a really lengthy, actually I want to say that the highest I've seen was to the 10th power. And that was about 9 or 10 factors long. So You just don't use it that often, that's all. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, I no, was okay. looking for that function actually, and that kind of correlates to, I didn't see that. No, oh, okay. Yep, there's no specific one for as far as, like, those larger numbers. I mean, they exist, but they're just not very practical. Yes? So I think we went over this last class, but if we want to manipulate other terms in our, um, like, inside our natural log, would we just want to have that as our x? Like, if we mm -hmm. wanted to find the sum for just natural log of x, Yep, then that would be x minus 1 to the n. I think we had the x minus 1 we did last time. That's what I thought. Yep. All right. So this next one's a little... Oh, okay, yeah, I'll go ahead and restart that. Thank you. All right, you want to do writing? Okay. So let's say if you want to find the first, four non-zero terms, <coughs> for the McLaurin series, f of x equals the hyperbolic sine of 2x.